All right, Prime Minister, thank you again for coming to the Lowy Institute. Congratulations on the white paper that you launched today and thank you for accepting our invitation to launch it here. Thank you very much. And thank you also for taking a few questions um, from me. So can I begin by asking, the white paper says the Asian century is an Australian opportunity. How big is the opportunity and how can we seize it? The opportunity is so big, uh, it can be beyond people's comprehension, which is why we've documented it through a lot mm -hmm. of statistics in the white paper. But I think the easiest way to conceptualise it is that uh, in you know, the, the days in which I grew up, uh, people thought about the world in which they lived, they thought about the economy in the US, they thought about the economy in Europe and they looked at Asia as a place of poverty. And what we worried about was that Asia would perhaps get into our markets in the US and Europe and undercut us as a lower cost producer. Now, in the era in which we live and will live in this century, uh, we are looking towards a middle class Asia, more middle class people than live anywhere else on the planet, working out how our economy can sell them the things that they want to have, whilst the US and Europe tries to do the same, we have the benefit of adjacency, mm -hmm. and that is one of the things that makes it an Australian opportunity particularly. And when you talk about the size of the opportunity, how have you seen it yourself in your travels in countries like China and Indo Indonesia and India? Mm -hmm. Uh, I've had the opportunity to travel across our region as Prime Minister and there are always little things that uh, take your eye and catch you. Uh, in India, for me, it's the number of young people you mm. see, such a young place. And what that means is that they'll need to see rapid economic growth, but they will also have a generation of middle class consumers who, like young people here, are 24-7 connected, uh, prepared to look for opportunities around the world for travel, for study, for healthcare services, for clean food, for good quality wine, for customised manufactured goods and the list goes on. So the young people there, a huge opportunity for us. In Korea, it's been how it's such a huge city as Seoul has risen out of the ashes of the Korean War, and I got to see that through the eyes of some veterans I took back, how startling for them to see that amazing city, so many of them having not returned since they were fighting in the Korean War. In Indonesia, it's the sense of vibrancy and change, as well as the building of a liberal democracy in what is such a short space of time. I mean, it's within my parliamentary mm -hmm. career that that democracy has mm -hmm. been built. Uh, so all of these things reinforce to me uh, the dimensions of change in our region. What the white paper is about is having a plan to make sure that we succeed in this era of change. Now one part of the plan that the White Paper addresses is our diplomatic network in the region and it talks about opening new diplomatic posts in Mongolia and eastern Indonesia and China when circumstances allow. As you know, the Institute has written a lot about Australia's diplomatic network. How big a national priority is it for us to bulk up our network of embassies and posts around the world, especially in our region? This is an important national priority. There's only so much money and we are in a time of fiscal consolidation and what that means, whether you're a social policy proponent or a proponent of better arrangements for business and more support for them, or a proponent of a bigger diplomatic network, uh, that you do have to take your place around the expenditure review mm -hmm. committee table and engage in a bit of cut and thrust. Uh, but this, uh, for us, uh, over time, I think is a very important priority. Priority. Uh, we do ask our Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade through our posts around the world to do some amazing work for us and that is going to grow and mm -hmm. we need it to grow. And finally, uh, I mentioned in my remarks that um, this launch comes only one week after we were elected to the Security Council after being away for 25 years, for which congratulations to you and your government. Um, we're also a member of the G20, another global forum, the, the premier forum for international economic collaboration. Does belonging to these two global forums, does that distract us from Asia or does it help us in Asia? Oh, I think it helps us in Asia. 
Uh, the, uh, around the G20 table, we sit with uh, a number of uh, countries in our region and get the opportunity to exchange with them as we focus on the global economy. Uh, we, uh, we, Australia, are bringing the G20 here. We will be hosting in 2014. Uh, that's a huge opportunity for us to work with friends in the region, uh, Indonesia, uh, which will be hosting APEC shortly before, so that we can take the focus on the global economy and build into it more of an understanding of our regional economy. So this is an opportunity for us uh, within our region and beyond. Uh, the Security Council is an opportunity for us within our region and beyond too. Uh, we pitched our campaign as taking our region's voice to the Security Council table and that means that there will be countries across the region that want to come knocking on our door because they've got a particular perspective about a matter before the Security Council. All right, PM. Well, thank you again. Uh, congratulations on the White Paper and thank you for making an argument today for a strong uh, engaged Australia, a strong open Australia engaging heavily with Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.